So what we have here is a circuit that is turned on and off only by the use of a magnet using two reed switches, an in-channel MOSFET and a P-channel MOSFET. This switch turns it off and there's absolutely no current flowing when that LED is off. This turns it on, turns it off. I find this application pretty cool because I can turn a device on and off only with a magnet from the outside of the unit. So my gauss meter is going to have a reed switch in the center that allows the device to turn on and a reed switch down here that turns it off. So you'll be able to put the magnet in the center, read your value whenever you're done, slide the magnet down, the device will turn on. Now I didn't have any reed switches on hand so I took this interesting part which it consists of a reed switch inside of a coil and it works kind of like an opto isolator does. So the coil, when a power is applied to the coil, it creates a, a magnetic field that then turns the switch on, but there's some isolation there. So in cases where you need isolation between a switch and another part of your circuit, this is uh, a good alternative to an opto isolator. A reed switch consists of two ferrous metal strips inside a sealed glass tube. When a strong enough magnetic field is introduced, the strips make contact and allow current to flow through the switch. Once the magnetic field is removed, the switch turns off. It's a good idea when soldering reed switches to give it some kind of heat sink to prevent the heat from the soldering from damaging the seal on the glass tubes. You also don't want to alter the length of the leads of your reed switch because they're also ferrous material and the more of the lead you cut off the less sensitive your switch becomes. The values on the data sheet are often assuming that you're using the stock lead length. Okay so the way this circuit works is we have our in-channel MOSFET here and our P-channel MOSFET here and if you're familiar with in-channel MOSFETs the when the gate is driven a certain voltage above the source, it turns on. Well, the P-channel is uh, opposite of that. You want the, uh, when the gate is driven low, it turns on. When the gate is high, it remains off. So right when you put the circuit together, this is off. There's no current flowing at all. This is your on switch, this is your off switch. And I've replaced these switches with reed switches. So when you introduce the magnet to this reed switch, what you do is you're basically dropping the gate of the P-channel low. The second you do that, the instant you do that, it drops that gate of the P-channel to ground. When that drops to ground, the P-channel turns on. When the P-channel turns on, it has enough time to turn the gate, bring the gate of the in-channel high, and basically bringing the gate of the P-channel down to ground even after the switch has been let go. So this latches the circuit on and when we introduce a magnet to this reed switch we turn the gate of that in-channel, we, we drop it to ground and turn that in-channel off. Once that turns off the P-channel is back to being off and there's no current flowing. So when it's on, let's go over it again one more time, so 5 volts when we drop that to ground the gate drops to ground. When the gate drops to ground, the P-channel turns on. P-channel turns on, puts five volts at the gate, the gate of the in-channel. Once that happens, it turns on, brings the gate to ground, even after that switch is let go. So now we have current flowing from five volts through our P-channel here and through our load. So we can use this circuit to uh, you know, if you didn't want to use reed switches, you could use it to turn a momentary push button. Um, kind of, uh, you can have two of them and turn that into a, a latching on off analog switch. Hey guys, so I hope you liked that video. And if you did like it, I hope that you actually like the video and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And um, go ahead and leave me a comment about what you could use this circuit for. Um, the way the new YouTube algorithms work is it's all about engagement. So yeah, I could have a ton of views, but if I don't have any likes or comments, my video is not going to get recommended throughout YouTube itself. So uh, 
see you guys later.